Oh, I'm ready. Good morning, friends, and welcome. Today is April 7th, 2024. Tomorrow is April 8th. Tomorrow is the eclipse of some sort where one heavenly thing gets in front of another heavenly thing and blocks its light from getting to you. And if you have some of them fancy glasses you can buy at the store, a couple of dollars, you can look at it and not hurt your eyeballs. Um, so if that's something you want to do, make sure that you're ready for that because that's tomorrow. I'm ready for it. Um, it's sunny out today. It looks great out there. It's beautiful. I hope that it's beautiful where you are as well and that you take opportunity today to get out there and to enjoy some of uh, nature and and all that is there. We've been waiting what seems like a long time for the, the weather to change, and it has done that. So uh, make good use of it today. Enjoy God's nature today and get out there and, and be part of it. Um, question. Chalk. What does a piece of chalk and, and a few scripture readings have to do with revival and living in God's complete love? That's our topic for today. That's what we're going to cover today. And if you'd like to get in on the whole chalk thing, if you don't have chalk at home, I consider you and yours invited to join us here today at 1030. Uh, we'll be in the sanctuary today at 1030 for worship. And you could get your own bag of with, with a piece of chalk in it right here today. Um, it says on here, it says Psalm 90, 14. Uh, Psalm 90, verse 14 says, Fill us at daybreak with your love so that we can sing for joy as long as we live. And we'll learn a little more about that in a little bit, but um, what a great way to start the day right there. Um, see, um, what else am I supposed to tell you about right here in this space? Um, I think that's it for now. I think that's all I got, at least for right now. Um, oh, we're going to be in 1 John chapter 4 today, so if you have your Bible handy, 1 John chapter 4, that's where we'll be. We'll have our uh, uh, men's breakfast on in two weeks. It'll be on the 20th. Yeah, that'll be April 20th. It's a Saturday uh, at 8 o'clock. We'll have breakfast here. Every, everyone's invited, the men, the ladies, the kids, the grandkids, the neighbor's kids. Uh, come on out and enjoy uh, a breakfast. And then we'll also have game day on that day from 1 to 5. Come out and play some games. If the weather uh, is continuing to be nice, maybe we'll find some outdoor games. We can go outside and enjoy some of the weather also. Looking forward to that. With that said, may we begin our time together with these words. Although following Jesus is difficult, you can be assured that God is always with you, bringing you encouragement, strength, and peace. Rise up, friends, and I'll and follow the one who offers his life for you. Amen. Uh, will you join me in prayer? God of love, you sent your Son into the world that we might live through him. May we abide in his risen life, so that we may bear the fruit of love for one another and know the fullness of joy. You have shown to us how to abide in your love through your Son, in whose name we do pray. Amen. All right, as stated, 1 John chapter 4, all the way in the back of the Bible, if you found Revelation, and you need to go forward just a little bit, and then you'll find it, 1 John 4. We'll, we will begin with verse 7 this morning. Dear friends, let us love one another, because love is from God, and everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God, because God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God, has, God sent his one and only Son into the world so that we might live through him. Love consists in this. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, if God loved us in this way, we also must love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God remains in us, and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we remain in him and he in us. He has given us his spirit. And we have seen and we testify that the Father has sent his Son as the world's Savior. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God remains in him and he in God. And we have come to know and believe the love that God has for us. God is love. 
and the one who remains in love remains in God, and God remains in him. This is the word of God for the people of God, and may all thanks be to God. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and we shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise, and ever enjoy your consolations. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Complete love. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God, and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us, so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. Friends, this morning I'd like to share with you what it means to be in complete love of God or to be made complete in his love. <clears throat> to seek that revival of complete love for yourself. In a poll that was taken on social media, because that's the best place to take a poll, because you get um, the right kind of results, right? true results. Matter of fact, the best results ever probably are taken on social media anyways the question was this um, what makes you complete here are some of the answers a good book a spouse parents uh, a few special people football music the beat of the heart the beach a pet a passion for something and my all-time favorite answer of what makes one complete is constant internet access it's a good one i like that now, this is just the tip of the iceberg of things that people may or may not truly believe would make them happy, would make them complete. Now, I found this article that talked about being a complete person. Let me share just a little bit of it with you. It says this, it says, Becoming a complete human being requires being very good in every sphere of life. It requires having integrity and being an honest person, having diverse knowledge of a wide range of subjects, being in excellent shape, having solid relationships with yourself, family, and friends, having a career that you enjoy, having hobbies and skills that you practice on a regular basis and are competent at, and being able to maintain a life of balance. It finishes like this, I don't think that there can be anything more rewarding than becoming a complete human being. Now, friends, Rereading this piece of the article, that seems really lofty list of things that you would have that you'd have to meet these requirements to be able to be a complete person. I don't know how many of us would actually be able to complete all of those things to check all of those boxes at all the time to be able to be considered a complete human being. Now, some of these things are fine and may help one feel like a better or a whole or a complete person. But friends may tell you there is only one that can truly make you better, whole, and complete. But you have a great idea who that might be, right? Uh, that one is Christ Jesus, who lived and died and bodily rose again, who showed and shared the love of God with all and any who would take the time to hear and to listen to his words. Friends, do you take the time to hear and to listen to the words of Christ? Are you listening to what it is that Jesus is saying to you? Do you hear him call you by name? Do you realize how important God's love for you really is? Really. Do you, do you understand the value of God's love for you? Don't sweat it if you don't. If you're on the fence and you're not sure, that's okay. If you were to take the time to really look at how many times in this one passage that John uses the word love, that would be 27 times, you would start to think that maybe even the people that John was writing to didn't quite grasp the importance of God's love for them. So you're in good company. Did the people of the early church understand how much God truly loved them and wanted them to show and share that same love with others? 
thus completing themselves. Do we understand how much God loves us today? Do we grasp that? Now, verse 8 tells us that God is love. And he showed and shared his love with humanity through his son, Jesus. Verse 9 goes on to say, This is how he showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This verse alone tells us a few things. First off, uh, that if God was willing to show his love to us, we in turn ought to be showing that same love to others. <clears throat> right? We can do that, right? Here's the new command I give is that you love as I have loved. We can do that. We, can, we should be striving to do that. Uh, the second point is that God gave his one and only. He gave the best. He gave us his all. God didn't give us leftovers or something to appease us for a little while. He gave the best that anyone could ever say yes to, and that is Jesus the Christ, the Messiah, Emmanuel, God with us. <clears throat> Have you said yes to him? The third thing then that this ver that's in this verse uh, for us, at least for today, is to see that this gift is for any who might. It's for any who might, right? Let's look at it again. This is how he showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. Hmm. Will you say yes to Jesus and live through him? Jesus is and was the atoning sacrifice for sin. Now my words, read them in the Bible. That's what I got to say about that. <clears throat> Seems to me like the uh, sacrificial atoning thing is happening right here. Uh, you do not, you cannot, and you will not ever be able to think, work, sweat, or pay for the sin of your life. Jesus and Jesus alone paid for your soul, for your life, to make you a new person, a whole person, a complete person. He brings complete revival to you, friends. As we continue through these verses, we come into verse 11 and 12 that tell us, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. Jack Kelly, uh, foreign affairs editor for US, USA Today, uh, tells this story. Uh, I would suggest that it aids in getting across how we should love one another. Um, he shared that while he was in the capital of Somalia uh, during a famine, uh, he says that it was so bad that we walked into one village and everybody was dead. There was a stench of death that gets into your hair, or it gets onto your skin, gets onto your clothes, and you can't wash it off. He says, then we saw this little boy. You could tell he had worms and was malnourished. His stomach was protruding. And he goes on to say that when a child is extremely malnourished, their hair turns a reddish color and the skin becomes crinkled as though they look like they're 100 years old. Our photographer had a grapefruit, which he gave to the boy, but um, Jack says that the boy was so weak, he didn't even have the strength to hold the grapefruit. So they cut it in half and gave him half of it, in which he uh, picked it up and he looked at them as to say thank you and then walked back toward his village. Uh, Jack and the others walked behind the boy in a way that he wouldn't know that they, he was being followed. And when they entered into the village, there on the ground was a little boy that Jack thought was dead. His eyes were completely glazed over, uh, but it turns out that this was the younger brother of the boy they had given the grapefruit to. The older brother kneeled down next to his younger brother, bit off a piece of the grapefruit, uh, began to chew it up a little bit, and then he opened his younger brother's mouth, uh, putting the grapefruit in his mouth, and then worked his brother's jaw up and down. Uh, Jack says that they had learned earlier that the older brother had been doing this for a couple of weeks now for his younger brother. A couple of days later, the older brother died of malnutrition, and the younger brother lived. Jack says this, and I think this is the point that we're trying to get to for today. Jack says, I remember driving home that night thinking <clears throat> what Jesus meant when he said, there is no greater love than to lay down your life for someone else. Could or would you show love like that? That's a good question, isn't it? 
ponder that. Think about that. Would you be willing to do that? <clears throat> now, verses 16 and 17 say, God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us, which is to say that each of us is a colorful light bulb in a string of bulbs that is life. Uh, now, now think about them old school Christmas lights, right? They're wired in series. Uh, first, the electricity comes into the wire, then to the bulb and through its filament, and then finally it goes back into the line on the next to the next bulb, and so on and so on until the entire chain of lights is lit. As it flows, not only uh, flows out, not only into each of those lights, but also into each of those lights, the entire circuit then is made complete, and the string of lights is bright. But if there's a light that's loose or a filament that's broken or maybe a bulb is missing altogether, then it doesn't receive the electricity to be able to pass it on to others. To the others. <clears throat> In a sense, God has wired us like Christmas lights. He has wired us to receive his love and he has also wired us to then pass it along to others. Friends, we have God's love to give. We have God's love to give. Are you sharing God's love? And now some might say, but it's scary to go out and to do for others. It's tough to go out and do mission work. Even if it's close to home, I just don't have time for that. I don't want to do it. What are we so fearful of? What are we afraid of? Verse 18 tells us that love drives out fear. That with love in the building, there is no fear. When you have the one that is love guiding you, there truly is nothing to fear. Once there was a carpenter who didn't overcharge for his work. Once there was a physician who healed the sick for free. Once there was a man who fed people at no charge. You know what they did to him? They crucified him. Friends, love has no fear. Sometimes people are fearful of love, even when they benefit from it. Sometimes we're going to be trampled on as we show God's goodness and mercy with others. But if Christ was able to stand strong through it, shouldn't we stand strong as well? Shouldn't we love because he first loved us? We should, shouldn't we? Sure, it's not easy, but this is what we're called to do. <clears throat> May I say to you, friends, the closing verses of John, of, of 1 John 4 tell us that if we do not love our brothers and sisters, if we do not love our neighbors, if we do not love the people on our block or in our community, if we cannot show love at the store by holding the door open or letting someone with just a few items ahead of us in line, then we do not love God. Thus, we are not complete. If you love God, then you will, you must, you shall love others. That's the command. Love others as I have loved you. May I say to you, friends, maybe you're waiting for me now to tell you or to ask you, who are you going to love this week? Probably I'm supposed to give you some suggestions on how to do that and you're supposed to remember them and then actually maybe attempt to do them. But there's this nagging whisper inside of each of us, isn't there? It says, I've tried that and I've got to tell you, I can't do it. I don't need the guilt, Pastor. I don't want to do it. I have better things to do this week. I will grit my teeth as hard as I can and tell you no way. I don't want to be rejected. So I'll tell you what. Don't even bother trying. Don't even try because it doesn't work. It doesn't work to love people. Begrudgingly. It doesn't work to love people when we don't have God's love inside us. It doesn't work to love people when you're on empty. Why? 
may say to you that when we are in when we are on empty, we don't feel like we have God's love to give. So then my suggestion then, instead of go out and share God's love with three people this week, would be, well, I would suggest to you to get loved up by God for you. Read your Bible this week. Just looking for God's great love for you and memorize some verses that you find. Here's something that you could think about. Um, you could think about Psalm 90, 14. Right? I shared it with you earlier. Fill us at daybreak with your love so that we can sing for joy as long as we live. How about Psalm 1? I'm not going to read it to you. You can go and read it. Psalm 1 or Psalm 62. Read that one. They're both pretty short. Uh, how about Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 17? Go and read those. James 4, 8 through 10. You want to remember what these all are? Well, come at 1030 and get one of these pieces of chalk as a sticker with all of them on it. Um, I'll try to remember to put them in the comment section later. Uh, Colossians 3, uh, James 4, and then Psalm 1, 62 and 90. There, there you go. Just read all of it. Um, but read the Bible. Looking for God's great love for you. Pray, thanking God for the love that he's given to you. There's no measuring up. There's no pity party. Tell God, thank you, Lord, for loving me. Friends, simply let God love you. Simply let God love you. Let his love fill you up so that it spills out for other people in your life. Open it up and let it flow. Let it flow and love one another. Let the complete love of God overflow in your life in such a way that it just spills forth for others. But get filled up first, friends. I heard this great idea about praying for revival recently. Pastor says to take a piece of chalk. That's what our chalk's for today. Take a piece of talk, uh, take a piece of chalk and draw a circle. Draw a circle on the sidewalk or your driveway. And then stand in the circle. While you're standing in the circle, pray to God and ask God to bring revival to everything that's inside the circle. Ask God to bring his complete love and that his Holy Ghost would indwell all that is inside the circle. Revival needs to start with you, friend. Oh, we want revival to break out like it did at, at Asbury earlier, or you know, later like, or at the end of last year. We want revival here. We want revival there. If you want revival in your church, you want revival in your home, pray for a revival for yourself. I like this idea. Draw the circle, stand at it, and ask for the complete love of God to indwell all that is inside the circle. And then draw the circle a little bit bigger. Make the circle bigger. Make the circle bigger, friends. Maybe you say, well, Pastor, I live on a gravel road or a dirt road, and I don't have a piece of concrete anywhere to draw a circle on to pray for God's indwelling. Well, guess what? We do here. Come on by. Got a big old parking lot. I'd love to see a bunch of circles in it. Go into your town. I'm sure your town has some sidewalk. Draw a circle. When you get to work tomorrow, draw a circle. Get out of your car. Draw a circle right there by the door of your car. Pray to God would indwell you with his complete love. That you'll be filled with God's love in such a way that you'll enter into that place wherever it is you're going. And then keep making the circle bigger, friends. The complete love of God needs to be shared. Let us pray. We need your healing love today, O oh Lord. Create in us a new heart of compassion. As Christ has called us to be witnesses of redemption rather than alienation, hold us gently. Heal us. 
enable us to truly be your disciples. As we draw our circles today or tomorrow and seek your indwelling within that space, prepare us to go forth from it to make the circle wider. Lord, on this day, we've brought before you names of people who are near and dear to us, seeking your will to be done. Bring healing, Lord. Bring wholeness. Bring completeness. Some are in need of healing, some for comfort, some for solace. Others are prayers of celebration and joy, where we give thanks for all that you've done. And as we prepare to go, Lord, we, we ask that you would help us to truly believe in your abiding love in answer to our prayers, that we willingly place our lives in your care. Lord, as we stand in our circles, we ask that you heal and restore us. For we ask this in the name of Christ. And ask now, God, that you would hear our prayer that we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, as we, uh, next week, I won't be here, so um, you get the morning off, um, but you can come and join us here at 1030. We'll be in the, in the sanctuary building for uh, in-person worship at 1030 next week. The Reverend Jim Tuttle will be with us to, to bring the good news. I'll be working the Walk to Emmaus retreat this, this coming week, so that's where I'll be. Um, friends, keep making that circle bigger. Keep sharing the, the, the love of God with others, okay? But allow God to love you. Allow what it says right here in Psalm 90, verse 14. Fill us at daybreak with your love so that we can sing for joy as long as we live. Friends, may that be your daily prayer each day this week. And then as you pray that, expect the Holy Spirit to indwell you. And then go forth and make that circle bigger to share God's love, would you? Uh, you have been healed and restored in Christ Jesus. Go in peace, proclaiming the good news of God's absolute and eternal love. Go in peace, friends, and until next time, be a blessing. Amen.